So the title of my talk is Lithium Ion B Batteries, the uh, energy technology that uh, changed the world. So who am I? Well, I uh, graduated from SB College in uh, 1965. So that was a, a few years ago. Uh, so this is how I looked and uh, now uh, when I was there, I don't know if any one of you remember me, but anyway, uh, well, I'm very honored to be back to talk about uh, lithium ion batteries. Uh, the, in, 19, in the 1970s, uh, the idea of a rechargeable battery was considered as an impossible dream. Uh, but today, uh, they are everywhere, uh, and uh, it is indispensable for our everyday life. And I've been able to make a small contribution to the founding and growth of this technology. And uh, SB College Education played an important role in my career. So this is what I, uh, the outline of my talk. I want to talk a little bit about the lithium ion battery chemistry and performance. Uh, we will go a little bit detail into the materials that are used in uh, building a battery anode materials or negative electrodes, cathode materials or positive electrodes, uh, electrolytes, separator, and lithium. Uh, then we will talk about uh, lithium ion battery state of the art, where the technology is today. And uh, followed by, uh, I will uh, uh, spend a few minutes talking about uh, very high energy density rechargeable batteries for uh, electric vehicle and other large scale uh, applications of the future, followed by some uh, conclusions. I know many of you are probably not very uh, familiar with uh, batteries, so I will uh, uh, provide a little tutorial at the beginning. So what is battery? A battery is a energy storage and conversion device. So a chemical energy is stored as anode and cathode materials in a sealed container together with the electrolyte and is converted into electrical energy. So it has two electrodes, uh, which are uh, two chemicals. Uh, anode, uh, the negative electrode material is oxidized to ions and electrode, and those ions and electrons combine with the cathode materials, uh, material to form a product C. So the overall reaction is you have two chemicals, uh, 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 an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent, to, uh, uh, they react to form a product plus uh, a large amount of energy, minus G, which is the free energy of, form, uh, uh, of the reaction. And uh, that uh, free energy is related to the, uh, uh, the electromotive force or the, uh, the electrical potential of the uh, cell uh, through the reaction minus G is equal to NFE. And, uh, and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the potential E therefore is equal to the, uh, uh, the free energy change divided by NF where N is the number of reactions involved in this reaction a number of electrons involved in the reaction, and uh, F is the Faraday constant. And uh, E, the potential is related to the current and resistance uh, in a circuit. So you can uh, use this relationship to calculate uh, the potential of a chemical reaction, and therefore, the, and, and from that, the amount of current uh, 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 and the total charge that you can uh, draw from that. So let me explain a little bit more uh, how, what happens when you discharge a battery. Uh, many of you are uh, using your uh, uh, cell phones and uh, computers right now, and you are drawing energy from the batteries in those uh, uh, devices. So what happens? Uh, now, uh, uh, as I said, there are two chemicals here, an anode and a cathode. Those two chemicals will spontaneously react if you bring them together. We don't want to have that happen. So what we want to have is to have a controlled reaction. 
So uh, in, how do we uh, make uh, the, these materials to react in a controlled fashion? So that's the key uh, uh, for a, a, a battery. Uh, so uh, what we do is we, uh, uh, first of all, let me say that the electro reactions are redox processes as we see in the, so in the previous slide. So they, uh, uh, the reactions produce electrons and ions. So the key is to separate these two species. The uh, electrons are separated from the ions through a separator here, a separator, uh, uh, conduct ions but not electrons. Electrons are allowed to go through only through the external circuit. So that's how we control the reaction. And so we separate the electrons and ions. They are, uh, electrons are channeled through the external circuit and uh, do work on the external uh, uh, load. You are able to use your uh, cell phones and uh, your computers and uh, uh, the ions uh, go from the uh, anode to the cathode when you discharge your battery and there they combine on the uh, the electrons come through the external channel and the ions come through the uh, electrolyte inside the cell they combine to form the product so that's just basically the uh, reaction in a in a battery when you discharge the battery and they uh, the, the reverse uh, reactions uh, happen in a rechargeable battery when you charge it. Can you see, can you, what's the question? Oh, I, somebody's, all right, so this is just a little uh, uh, a schematic here uh, that, uh, uh, a little animation showing what exactly happened. So as I said here before, the ions go from the anode on the right side to the cathode and the electrons go through the external circuit and uh, this will uh, continue until you uh, fully discharge your battery and the reverse happen on a charge. Just a little fun in the morning. All right, so this is, uh, so, so there are some properties of a battery that you have to uh, remember. Uh, so this shows the discharge and charge behavior, uh, 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 behavior of, a, uh, of a cell. Uh, uh, what are we doing here? We are measuring the potential of the, uh, of the cell as we discharge it, uh, take energy from, uh, from it. So uh, this is the fully uh, charged uh, state, the potential is uh, at its uh, maximum. So as you discharge, in this case, in a, at a constant current, the potential decreases. So as you, so you are drawing current from it for a certain number of hours, say in this case, uh, uh, 10 hours, uh, you get three ampere hours, so you are discharging at 0.3 ampere, so you get three ampere hour, and uh, the uh, when it comes to a, 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 a potential when uh, you don't get any more uh, uh, capacity from it, uh, because if you continue to discharge, it, the it potential will drop very drastically to zero volt. You don't want to have that happen, so you stop it uh, when the potential comes to a, a certain value in a given battery. In this particular case, you stop it around 1.5 volt. And then you recharge it. And uh, so you continue uh, charge and discharge like that. So what are the, uh, the, the parameters that we need to remember? Capacity. Capacity is uh, the, the current uh, that you uh, draw from the battery multiplied by the number of hours. So you get, so that's the uh, current is measured in ampere and the number of hours so the capacity is ampere hour and the energy the total energy is the product of uh, the capacity and voltage of the cell so in a, in a, in a cell, uh, cell like this where the voltage is uh, sloping you take the middle uh, approximately the middle of the uh, of the discharge curve so in this case you have a uh, you know, you multiply by the middle about two volt and uh, the capacity three ampere hour. So you get uh, 
six watt hour from this uh, uh, battery. So that's so, so, so those are the two parameters you have to remember. Then there is another uh, uh, property called uh, energy density, uh, which is basically watt hour divided by the weight of the battery. So weight energy density is a watt hour per kilogram. And you can also calculate uh, volume energy density, watt hour per liter. So you just take the watt hour from the battery uh, and divide by the uh, the uh, the volume of the uh, of the battery. So those are some of the uh, 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 properties of the battery that you have to remember. All right. Let's. So the, so these are uh, the main uh, rechargeable lithium batteries that are. Uh, 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 commercially available today. Lead acid battery was the first uh, rechargeable battery invented in 1859, followed uh, by uh, nickel cadmium battery in uh, 1899. Lead acid battery is what we use for starting our cars. Uh, nickel cadmium was the, uh, uh, the old uh, port uh, battery that was used in uh, portable devices. So then it took almost 100 years to come up with another battery, the nickel metal hydride battery in 1992. And lithium battery, rechargeable lithium metal battery started in 19, was invented in 1976 and lithium ion in 1990. So you can see uh, uh, it uh, has taken a long time for uh, these batteries to be invented. Uh, first of all, let me say that these two first three batteries have a, 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 are a water-based electrolytes, so they are uh, not very sensitive to air and moisture. Whereas uh, these uh, lithium batteries are very uh, uh, sensitive to uh, air and mo moisture because lithium uh, is very uh, it, it reacts with the moisture or water. So you have to use non-aqueous electrolytes or organic-based electrolytes. Uh, so that's another uh, 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 difference between the traditional battery and the lithium batteries. And the other thing is, uh, and because it, uh, 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 lithium is very reactive and moisture-sensitive uh, uh, material, you know, the battery has to be extremely tightly uh, packaged and sealed. So there is a lot of engineering. Uh, involved in it. Why it takes so long to produce new battery systems? Uh, because new chemistry and materials, uh, performance and safety, environmental issues, capital investments and price. So, uh, so this takes a long time and uh, it has taken a very long time uh, because new chemistries have to be in, had to be invented before new batteries uh, were, uh, were produced. Okay, so let's go and uh, 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 talk a little bit about the uh, rechargeable lithium uh, batteries with the uh, lithium metal anode. They were the first uh, 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 batteries uh, uh, of, of the uh, uh, lithium uh, metal uh, lithium uh, battery family. So the, the development started in the 1970s, and uh, well, lithium is a very light metal. So it's also the most electropositive uh, metal. That means that lithium can react with uh, pretty much any material uh, to produce uh, a battery. Uh, if the, of course, thermodynamically, lithium should react with everything. Uh, but uh, kinetics uh, prevents it in some cases. But, uh, uh, but uh, because it's also a light uh, 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 element, you are able to, uh, it's very attractive for uh, making batteries because uh, uh, high energy density batteries because it is, uh, it produces, uh, 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 the weight of it is very, very light. So uh, now it took another, uh, you know, a battery has two electrodes, negative electrode and positive electrode, or anode and cathode. So it, uh, uh, the key development uh, in uh, the uh, 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 in the form in in, in in the development of a uh, of a rechargeable lithium battery was the intercalation cathode, 
and in, uh, the first intercalation cathode was the uh, titanium disulfide uh, invented by Professor uh, uh, Whittingham in uh, 1974, and he won the Nobel Prize for that uh, last year. Uh, uh, well, then it also took a while to invent a new liquid electrolytes, and uh, so uh, so in the 1970s, soon after uh, Professor Whittingham uh, uh, discovered the uh, uh, the titanium disulfide intercalation cathode, uh, uh, people uh, started fabricating a, a, a rechargeable lithium uh, liquid electrolyte. Uh, titanium disulfide battery. So this is the overall reaction in that battery. Titanium disulfide is reduced to uh, uh, an intercalated product, the lithium titanium disulfide. And uh, on the anode, you have uh, the oxidation of uh, lithium, as we saw in the earlier si si uh, slide. And overall reaction is this. So, uh, but, uh, you know, titanium disulfide, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, I'm sorry, before that, let's uh, 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 see what intercalation electrodes are, because it's, they are very important in the uh, development of rechargeable batteries. So we need to take a look at what intercalation electrode reactions are. Uh, uh, titanium disulfide is a layered material material with a two dimensional lattice of uh, sides so the way so you have here a, 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 a schematic representation of the titanium disulfide lattice so you have these tis2 units stacked on uh, one on top of each other like this and uh, with uh, an interlattice spacing between the uh, uh, these uh, titanium disulfide layers in the crystal the, and, and those two interlattice uh, bonding there is very weak. They are a Van der Waals uh, type uh, weak bonding. So when you insert or uh, discharge your battery or uh, uh, you insert the lithium into this interlattice spacing, that's what is called intercalation reaction. You intercalate the uh, lithium ion into that interlattice spacing. And the electrons go into the uh, conduction band in the uh, in the material uh, uh, lattice structure. So you have really, in this case, a uh, double injection of electrons and, uh, uh, and ions. And the, the, the beauty of this reaction is that uh, it is very, uh, 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 it doesn't cause a, a, a much a structural change in the material. You, the main thing that happens in the, the crystal lattice of this material is it expands and contracts this interlattice spacing a little bit. That's it. So that's why the reaction is highly reversible. You can insert lithium, exert, uh, extract lithium without uh, too much uh, structural change in the material. So, uh, uh, Another intercalation compound is graphite. We will come to graphite because this is uh, an important material for lithium ion batteries. It's the same, uh, same uh, reaction, intercalation reaction. Uh, graphite has these uh, C6 uh, uh, layers of uh, carbon, uh, uh, six carbon atoms in a hexagonal uh, unit uh, 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 to form this low, uh, uh, low, uh, large sheets of C6 uh, layers. So they are then stacked on, in, uh, on top of each other. And uh, then when you, ins you can insert lithium and extract lithium out of it, so you, uh, it's another material. Another material is, uh, so this is uh, uh, an oxide, lithium cobalt oxide. Uh, it has the same kind of uh, uh, layered uh, uh, structure. Uh, uh, we have here a CO, uh, CO6 uh, octahedra. Uh, they are uh, connected to each other through these uh, lattice, uh, the, 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 uh, the faces and corners of uh, the octahedra. And then they are, uh, uh, and those layers are then arranged one on top of each other. 
There are also uh, materials with uh, one and three dimensional lattice size. You see, in this case, it's a two dimensional lattice. So there are also materials with uh, one and three dimensional lattice size. Uh, uh, for example, in one dimensional, there will be there are chains uh, of this material uh, of a material. Uh, they are then stacked together uh, uh, where uh, you can insert and extract through these uh, inner uh, chain uh, 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 spacing. And there are also three dimensional lattice, uh, uh, lattice uh, materials where uh, you have either a, uh, an octahedra or a hex, uh, hexagon or a cube, for example, with a, uh, 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 the lattice size. Uh, uh, sites through the 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 the, the faces of the uh, 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 the uh, the cube or the uh, uh, the uh, the hexagon. So this is sort of the beginning when I started working on it. As I said, uh, there was uh, already titanium disulfide known, but the lithium electrode was not. Uh, 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 cycling well. So our contribution mainly is in making the lithium anode work uh, well with uh, high efficiency. See in the battery you have to have both electrode work with the same kind of uh, charge discharge efficiency. So uh, a lithium anode was not working uh, at that time with uh, uh, good efficiency. In fact it was not possible to charge and discharge uh, a lithium anode more than a couple of times, or maybe ten times. That was not good enough for uh, 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 for making a practical battery. So what we did was uh, we uh, invented some new electrolytes, uh, uh, ether-based electrolytes. Uh, uh, so this is a, a mixed electrolyte based on uh, tetrahydrofuran and two metal tetrahydrofuran with some. Uh, small amounts of two-methyl furan, and we were able to show that using that electrolyte uh, and uh, lithium hexafluoro arsenate at that time was the electrolyte salt, uh, we were able to get, uh, uh, for the first time, batteries with uh, uh, more than 100 cycle. That was an exciting time at that time. So this shows the uh, charge-discharge behavior of uh, lithium titanium disulfide. Uh, full practical battery uh, that was uh, that we made and in fact i kept the original uh, data sheet that i i i i uh, 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 collected uh, the data that i collected on a chart paper at that time uh, uh, so this is that original data that i uh, i i i collected i still have it with me so the, we also made a, a followed uh, following that in uh, we published these things uh, this was first published in a, uh, in an electrochemical society meeting in uh, 1980 then subsequently we published uh, other papers uh, this is a uh, uh, we in this case we used a vanadium oxide uh, a cathode material as i said they, most people were working on cathode material so there were several cathode materials available but anode material anode was the problem so we uh, uh, made a you know a, a significant improvement uh, to that so we were able to uh, to make uh, other uh, uh, rechargeable lithium metal anode battery uh, however we uh, we found that there was a problem in making uh, the rechargeable lithium metal anode battery practical because uh, with the continued cycle, uh, let's say uh, after 100 cycles or so, the uh, lithium anode, uh, this is the electrode here on the right side, a negative electrode, uh, uh, completely uh, 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 fails. It con it's converted into a fine uh, powdery material so that was a, so you can get about 100 or 150 cycles depending upon the electrolyte that you use but eventually it fails and this powder uh, material was also very reactive and uh, and uh, and uh, can cause uh, safety hazards in the battery but if you look at this uh, uh, diagram here you can see that the intercalation electrode remains intact yeah, although the lithium metal anode failed. So what do you do? Uh, to, what do you have to do is to 
make a battery with the two intercalation electrodes. So that's what the lithium ion batteries are. Uh, so lithium ion battery, uh, uh, so, uh, batteries are, uh, are uh, uh, batteries with uh, two elec intercalation electrode. Intercalation electrode for the negative electrode and intercalation electrode for the positive electrode. So in the first uh, commercial uh, lithium ion battery, graphite was used as the uh, negative electrode because it has a potential uh, uh, that is very close to lithium metal. So you take a material with a low voltage for anode and high voltage for cathode. And at that time, uh, Professor uh, Goodenough came out with this material uh, because of from his uh, experience of using it this for magnetic applications, so he came out with this material. So, uh, with their, uh, but I, I show here uh, a whole bunch of other materials uh, on this potential uh, uh, scale uh, 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 versus lithium. So you can uh, make uh, lithium-ion batteries with uh, many of uh, many uh, combinations of electrodes. However, uh, you know, you want to have uh, two electrodes that, uh, a negative electrode that is the low, uh, with, a, with a low voltage and a, a positive electrode with a high voltage, so you can get the highest voltage for the battery and also lightweight. So this is where uh, the, uh, uh, the lithium ion with the uh, graphite uh, lithium cobalt oxide battery that uh, came, uh, uh, was commercialized by uh, Sony in uh, 1990. So it uh, so it uh, went away. The the original lithium anode battery moved on to a lithium ion battery, where the negative electrode uh, 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 lithium metal was replaced by graphite, and the positive electrode uh, a high voltage material metal oxide. A lithium cobalt oxide. So that uh, if batteries with intercalation anode and intercalation cathode materials gives long cycle life. So this is uh, the detailed schematic of a lithium ion cell. So it's a pretty complicated uh, uh, device where uh, you take your uh, uh, cobalt oxide as powder uh, and a very uh, uh, micron sized powder they are then uh, uh, bonded onto a, a, a current collector, and the graphite is also taken as uh, this uh, fine powder and uh, bonded onto a copper current collector. And they are then uh, so you make a lo long sheets of this, uh, about a foot long sheet of this in this particular uh, original battery, which Sony uh, came out with, which is called an 18650 cell, which is a, a particular size uh, uh, cell, 18 millimeters uh, diameter and 65 millimeters uh, 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 length, 18650. So this is the original Sony battery design. Uh, so you make these long uh, uh, sheets of uh, anode and cathode uh, and have put a separator in between and then wind it in the, if you are using a, a round can, you can wind it up and put it in the wound uh, uh, into the can and put the uh, washers and gaskets and everything and put a cap and seal it. So you get your, uh, you can also cut them into smaller pieces and uh, seal them in uh, a metalized plastic. Uh, this is the battery that you have in your uh, cell phones. So that is a, a lithium ion battery. Now, I, I don't know how much more time I have. Uh, how much more time I have? I have a lot more to present. Uh, yes, I can, I can talk, sir, no problem. OK, I have, all right. So this is a graphite uh, anode here. I want to talk a little bit about the, the chemistry of each of these uh, electrodes here. That, that's very important. So uh, as I said before, you have graphite anode uh, uh, if you, uh, when you charge your battery, lithium goes into the uh, interlattice spacing in the uh, uh, graphite structure and you form a lithiated graphite. So that is what happens when you charge your battery. 
Uh, so you can study that. You can study that by uh, separately by making a, a, a half cell with a, what we call a half cell with graphite electrode and a lithium counter electrode. So this is simply showing the electrochemical behavior of your graphite electrode. So as you can see here, this is the first charge of your, uh, your uh, graphite electrode. When you charge it first, uh, you can see that there is uh, this first uh, part of it. Uh, it's, uh, there is some capacity here. This shows that the battery has capacity. This particular cell has capacity in this region because you have a, uh, you know, a, a reduction at a higher potential than, uh, 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 than zero volt. Otherwise, it should, it should just come down. Uh, uh, it should come down to the graphite potential. I'm very close to zero volt. I'm sorry. So anyway, so you have this part of the capacity, which is called, uh, uh, which is the reduction of the electrolyte to form a, a film on the surface of the graphite. And that film formation is extremely important because that film protects the lithium, uh, I mean, the graphite from uh, reacting further with the electrolyte when you continue to cycle your battery. This is, this is what we call a solid electrolyte interface on the graphite anode. So this formation of this is very important, and that depends upon the solvents that you use. Uh, so electrolyte composition is extremely important for a stable graphite anode. Because that, you have to find a, an electrolyte that reduces to form an insoluble uh, uh, surface film that conducts ions. So it's a, uh, it's a lot of organic chemistry and, uh, and uh, surface science and all involved in that. Uh, so you have to uh, stable surface film on graphite called the solid ele electrolyte interface, essential to prevent decomposition of the electrolyte. So, so that is uh, the chemistry of the uh, graphite anode. So the uh, intercalation electrode, as I said, this is the first uh, intercalation electrode, uh, cobalt oxide. Subsequently, subsequently, people came out with uh, other materials. Uh, lithium manganese oxide is a three-dimensional material. You see, you can see the lattice sides. Uh, these are these uh, open, uh, uh, open uh, holes in the uh, three-dimensional lattice. So the lithium can go in and out of that uh, when you discharge and charge your battery. Another material is this uh, uh, olivine uh, 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 lithium ion phosphate. Uh, there are many others. Uh, so this is uh, the the three uh, the, uh, three uh, materials that are uh, now in commercial batteries uh, lithium cobalt oxide now cobalt is an expensive material and it is also very it's rare uh, it's uh, mostly produced in uh, uh, some countries in uh, africa they are always fighting there so and it is a, a expensive material uh, so well, there have been a lot of work to replace uh, the cobalt in the cobalt oxide and uh, that is done by substituting some of the cobalt with uh, manganese and nickel so these material nickel cobalt manganese have the same same structure as cobalt oxide however you have much less cobalt this is uh, what is uh, the material that is in most commercial lithium ion but well this and that are coming becoming the most commercial uh, 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 battery electrode material, cathode material, nickel, cobalt, aluminum, NCA, this is NMC. Uh, uh, people are uh, facing this material out, although some batteries still have cobalt oxide. So these are the structures. So uh, electrolyte is very important. There's a lot of organic chemistry. I don't want to, sp I spend a uh, I had a good uh, organic chemistry background from SB College, so I did a, uh, organic chemistry was one of my favorite uh, subjects. So I did a lot of uh, work on electrolytes. So these are some of the electrolytes that we made. Uh, others have worked on it too. So we, uh, ethylene carbonate, a very important uh, electrolyte. That uh, this is the uh, ethylene carbonate, dimethyl carbonate, ethyl methyl carbonate. Well, in a practical battery, uh, a mixture of these three, uh, uh, two or three of these carbonate solvents are used uh, 
to make the electrolyte for lithium ion battery. Well, the reason for uh, ethylene carbonate actually is a, a semi solid at room temperature because ethylene carbonate has a melting point of uh, 37 degrees centigrade. So at uh, uh, room temperature, it's a solid. Uh, however, it's a it's a very important solvent for uh, lithium ion because it is the solvent that forms the the solid electrolyte interface that we talked about earlier. That happens from the reduction of uh, the uh, EC. So uh, the first reduction when you charge your battery, uh, uh, that is done in the factory. Uh, the uh, lithium, uh, I'm sorry, the ethylene carbonate is uh, reduced uh, to form a, a lithiated uh, carbonate, uh, organic carbonate uh, uh, material that's uh, uh, an insoluble uh, uh, material that caught the uh, graphite anode, and that is the SEI uh, in the, uh, the, the solid electrolyte interface material. So the use of ethylene carbonate is very important but that is you know that's a high melting uh, 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 liquid so in order to dilute that people uh, uh, put uh, other carbonates uh, the, the low uh, melting point uh, uh, carbonates like uh, diethyl carbonate and ethyl methyl carbonate because the battery has to operate over a wide temperature range it has to operate from minus 20 degrees centigrade to 80 degrees centigrade. So you cannot just use one solvent, ethylene carbonate. You need to have a, a find a other solvents that will uh, widen the temperature of operating temperature range of the battery. So you use a mixture of these solvents. So that's a proprietary thing. So a lot of companies, uh, they make all kinds of different solvents and mix them up and there are also small amounts of additives they they put in to put in to improve the the the, the, sub, the graphite surface properties the SEI properties so it's a very complex mixture that uh, in these commercial batteries and uh, that's an area of uh, uh, research and investigation very active even today and the uh, lithium salt you need a salt uh, lithium uh, salt uh, uh, along with uh, the solvent to form the electrolyte and the commercial batteries use a lithium hexafluorophosphate. It's a complex anion salt of uh, uh, lithium cation. So you form a Li plus PF6 minus. All right. Uh, well, this shows that the band cap or the, uh, the stability window of the electrolyte has to be better than the we uh, be outside of the, uh, uh, the uh, of that of the electrodes because you don't want the electrolytes to electrolyte to reduce and oxidize when you charge and discharge your battery. So it's a it's a very uh, you know involved uh, process to come out with a practical electrolyte. So that's why sometimes these uh, the, the, uh, the development of batteries take very long time. So uh, this is a. Uh, I did some work early on uh, to understand the structure of uh, organic electrolytes. So this is uh, I, I, this was a work I, I used NMR, uh, nuclear magnetic res resonance uh, 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 <coughs> experiments to uh, to show that the lithium ions are solvated. That means uh, the uh, in this case, it's a tetrahydrofuran and two methyl tetrahydrofuran. They form complexes with the lithium plus lithium cations. And so you have a uh, solvent separated ion pairs here uh, where uh, the lithium uh, is solvated. And we also showed uh, through some temperature dependent NMR studies that uh, uh, these solvents are uh, all exchanging. Uh, uh, with uh, uh, the lithium ion uh, continuously so that when you have uh, uh, a mixed uh, solvent uh, electrolyte, uh, you have uh, 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 a continuously exch uh, 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 exchanging uh, uh, solvents around the lithium ion to form this uh, mixed solvent uh, 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 electrolyte. And they are uh, 
they we found them to uh, provide a better low temperature performance for example so uh, the structure of uh, uh, structural studies of the electrolyte is very important in in uh, uh, explaining the uh, the uh, and also to come out with the new electrolytes for uh, improved uh, lithium ion batteries this is another electrolyte that we showed where the uh, carbonate where which has both uh, a carbonate moiety as well as uh, uh, an, uh, an ether. So this is a methoxy ethyl methyl carbonate has both. Uh, and we showed uh, from NMR studies that uh, the lithium is complex uh, uh, for, uh, with the uh, carbonate part, preferentially to the uh, the ether uh, uh, the, the side uh, either uh, component, uh, the either part of the. Uh, of the carbonate solvent. So those are uh, some of the basic uh, studies that you can uh, uh, you can carry out uh, on the electrolytes. So the I published we published these papers in 1986 and 99 and, uh, in uh, in the Journal of the Electrochemical Society uh, Society. So I also did some. Uh, so this shows what uh, what people do. So in order to you know as I said, a battery has to work. Uh, uh, from uh, very low temperatures to very high temperatures. So you look at the uh, the ionic conductivities of these electrolytes as a function of temperature. In this case, from minus 40 degrees to 80 degrees centigrade. And uh, you can see that uh, we did this study with the different mixed uh, solvent electrolytes. Uh, two sol EC, EMC, EC, DMC, D DEC. Uh, so this is a EC, ethyl, ethylene carbonate, dimethyl carbonate, uh, ethyl methyl carbonate. And then another one, we made a four solvent mixture. So you can see that it has a good, good uh, low temperature behavior, but all the way down to minus 40 degrees. Ionic conductivity is very important, uh, 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 you know, for a, for a battery because that is a, uh, determines the, the speed with, the, with which the ions move between the electrodes. So the higher the conductivity, the better it is. So you, you know, so uh, this shows the you know the how uh, uh, new solvents are uh, created to get uh, both a low temperature and a high temperature uh, uh, behavior in batteries. And from these studies, uh, I published, uh, uh, I summarized many of these things are in uh, this uh, 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 review paper that I wrote uh, in uh, 2015. It's in the Journal of Physical Chemistry. Uh, it's a pretty uh, comprehensive paper. I can send it to you if you are interested, uh, if anybody is interested. Uh, uh, that where uh, we, from studying the uh, temperature versus conductivity, we, uh, behavior of this electrolyte uh, showed that the uh, the conductivity versus temperature behavior is non irenaceous and uh, from that we were able to show that uh, the uh, the ionic motion or the ionic conduction is a, a, a is a solvent uh, assisted uh, 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 property in other words the ions move uh, in the battery uh, through the assist uh, by the assisted uh, uh, motion of the solvents because of the, the solvation uh, 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 of the uh, uh, the, uh, the lithium ion by the uh, the solvent. All right. So separators are important. I don't want to spend a lot of time here, but separators are. Uh, uh, the, Two main materials are uh, uh, polyethylene and polypropylene membranes. They're very thin membranes, uh, microporous material. Micro, so there are so so you know so there is some polymer chemistry also in uh, this uh, uh, lithium-ion battery. So you have organic chemistry, liquid electrolyte, uh, polymer uh, polymer chemistry, and so on. So you want to look for a separator with a high porosity, with small pore size uh, for uh, uh, lithium ion batteries too, because the higher the porosity, uh, the better the conductivity, because the ions have to move through the uh, uh, 
uh, uh, the separator. The, the separator uh, in the battery is soaked with the electrolyte. So, you know, it's, uh, they, they separate the two electrodes, but there are uh, very tiny micron size uh, 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 holes in there through which the ions can path, pass through. And the electrolyte is just uh, uh, put in, into the hole, uh, into the electro, uh, in, into the uh, the cell where which uh, gets into these uh, uh, electrode structures, uh, the anode and the cathode uh, porous structure, and into the uh, pores of the separator. All right. So this is uh, now finally we come to a full battery. So. You know, you have the anode and the cathode. You put together the graphite and the co and the cobalt oxide in this case. And uh, what the the voltage you are measuring is simply the difference between the voltages of uh, this is the fully charged battery. So it's uh, around four volt. Uh, and uh, then when you discharge the water, uh, the uh, the voltage uh, come down to. Uh, uh, and you stop it around uh, 3 volt because below that there is no capacity. This is simply showing the discharge uh, of a, a lithium uh, uh, ion as uh, 18650 cell. This is the original Sony cell at different current. So you can, what happens when you, they, their design is such that in this particular case, it gave, uh, gives almost the same uh, capacity at uh, three different currents. All right. So this is what the lithium ion battery evolution. So this is uh, in 1992, Sony, uh, uh, when they came out, uh, this 18650 cell had about one ampere hour capacity. It gradually increased uh, by uh, 2000. Uh, 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 four or well, 2005, just with the same electrodes, they were able to increase the capacity, double the capacity, more than double the capacity of the battery by through electrode uh, loading, uh, uh, cell engineering. Basically, most of the early improvement came from cell engineering. So there is a lot of engineering work in this uh, uh, mechanical engineering. Uh, 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 or in this cell, how you uh, 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 you know uh, fabricate your electrode and the loading on that, uh, the, the weights of the current collectors and all that. So there is a uh, electrical engineering combined with uh, mechanical engineering and chemical and engineering as well as chemists. So there is a uh, a battery requires. Uh, a uh, little bit of knowledge in all of these different things or you have a group with, uh, with who have uh, ex expertise in uh, all of these areas so this is the uh, by 18650 cell today this is the round uh, uh, 18650 size uh, cell that is in your laptop uh, uh, in the in the bigger laptops uh, the, the the thin laptops use a uh, flat cell but that battery has today has around uh, the battery cell has around 3.6 ampere hour and uh, which is uh, 285 uh, yeah so it's uh, some people claim they can make four ampere hour battery so it goes so it, it's a slightly different for different manufacturers so that is the state of the art uh, uh, it took uh, uh, um, you know, almost 30 years to reach, uh, 25 years to reach this stage. Uh, so here is a summary of uh, all of these, uh, the various commercial batteries uh, that, that are available. Uh, you have uh, the, as I said, the uh, cobalt oxide, the nickel uh, manganese uh, cobalt oxide, the nickel cobalt aluminum oxide, and then there are also these iron phosphate and uh, uh, the spinel or the iron the lithium manganese oxide uh, uh, based uh, uh, battery cell but the main the, the most uh, uh, portable ele electronics and electric vehicle they're all made by uh, with these uh, the first three uh, uh, the first uh, or i should say the second and the third now because because people are moving away from cobalt oxide the the iron phosphate is a uh, it's a very good battery, but uh, 
it has energy density is low so it's used in some uh, 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 applications like uh, uh, power backup and load leveling and things like that utility applications where you don't need a the energy density is not uh, is not the key factor but uh, the uh, the ability to uh, last long and cycle uh, give a, uh, thousands of cycles which uh, the cobalt the iron phosphate battery is able to do all right so this is uh, just showing the capacity and cycle life uh, this is some data that i generated uh, you can set more than a couple you can get a couple of thousand cycles now and the battery so you can charge and discharge uh, some cases up to 2000 cycles uh, and uh, so uh, this is just showing what happens, uh, you know, when you uh, uh, operate your device at uh, different temperatures. This is showing performance of this battery down to minus 20 degrees. This is at different currents. So, the, you know, you, you have some uh, lowering of the voltage due because of the increase in the battery res resistance. But uh, the capacity, the, you can uh, uh, run it a uh, fairly long time. Uh, even at lower temperatures or a higher current, uh, if you make the battery uh, 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 correctly. Uh, so, and the commercial, uh, some of these large manufacturers are able to do that. All right. So, now, you know, in a, let's just go to uh, electric vehicles. Uh, in a, uh, that is the next big thing are uh, electric vehicle batteries. Batteries, uh, electric vehicles, and batteries for electric vehicles. Uh, about three years ago, Indian uh, Power Minister Piyush Gobal, uh, I know politicians sometimes make big promises, but he said that by 2030, not a single petrol or diesel car should be sold in India. Well, the reason being uh, pollution. See, if, if you look at the slide on the left side, uh, this is uh, uh, taken from uh, the uh, Times of India publication. Uh, showing what people were wearing masks even before the coronavirus in delhi for years the reason is the pollution there in delhi you couldn't see you see this is you cannot see this is during noon time you cannot uh, see the city at that sometime because of all the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the pollution uh, the discharge from the uh, the uh, the, car, uh, the the the, the polluted uh, discharge from uh, car exhaust so you, you know uh, so the in order to uh, 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 to to solve that problem you need to come up with uh, you know uh, uh, a bad uh, uh, a car that use uh, an alternative uh, uh, use alternative energy of course uh, lithium ion batteries an appropriate uh, uh, power source for that and this is a uh, Tesla is uh, they are one of the early uh, developers of uh, uh, battery uh, uh, electric vehicle cars, but it's a very expensive sports car. Uh, 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 originally, they came from uh, with uh, you know it cost up to hundred thousand uh, 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 dollar dollars. Now they have a new uh, car, uh, Tesla Model Three, which is uh, the thirty-five. Uh, 48,000 uh, range depending upon the size of the battery and uh, 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 and, the, uh, and, and the luxuries inside uh, the car. So you get a, uh, you can go in with this uh, Tesla model about 200 to 250 miles on a single charge. If 250 miles uh, uh, if you buy a 75 kilowatt hour battery. So it's a fairly large uh, battery pack. You can see the battery pack is shown on the right side here. Uh, the battery is, uh, uh, it's a very complex uh, package. Uh, you have this, you make a cells, the cells are put together to form uh, modules and then modules are then uh, assembled into this large uh, battery pack. And uh, then uh, put a, as, uh, mounted at the bottom of the car here. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of work goes into that. Uh, and the batteries are expensive. That is a, that's one downside of uh, lithium ion technology for electric vehicle. The price is still high, but they are coming down. Uh, 
as more and more batteries and uh, 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 more and more uh, batteries are produced, uh, factories are producing more uh, battery materials, and uh, they are also finding uh, more materials. And materials are also recycled back to uh, reuse. So there, with all that, the price is coming down. This is a Nissan Leaf. I think there is a. This is one. Nissan has some uh, some project uh, in Kerala, and uh, they are uh, uh, producing a, a, a Nissan vehicle with uh, around uh, 80 to 100 mile range, a small battery, smaller battery pack. So that goes about 100 to uh, on a single charge, about 80 to 100 miles. So there is a lot of other companies are developing. As you can see, uh, I have a. You don't really have to know all these things, but just um, a lot of companies are involved in developing various types of uh, electric vehicle, and they are going to be here for uh, uh, for in the many uh, uh, may in the many many years in the future. And uh, India is very much involved in it. I read that all the time that a lot of companies are uh, are uh, beginning uh, manufacturing uh, lithium-ion batteries uh, together with uh, companies from China and Korea. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunities uh, for future uh, uh, jobs and business and everything uh, in this field. Uh, uh, so this is uh, increasing, accelerating very fast. So it is uh, today uh, lithium-ion market is a uh, hundred billion uh, per year business, and it is uh, expected to go, uh, uh, you know. Uh, significantly uh, 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 higher in the future. 100 billion is what? It's a 10,000 uh, crore, I guess. 10,000 crores, yes. Something like that. Dollars. So another, uh, there are aerospace application of, I wanted to say a couple of, uh, you know, a little bit about that. The aerospace application of uh, Lithium ion batteries are very important application. They are used in air, aeroplane, airplanes now for uh, various uh, 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 various uh, lighting and uh, various kinds of uh, 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 utilities in the airplane. But a, a, a major uh, success of uh, lithium ion batteries has been in uh, uh, in the Mars ex exploration by Yadni lithium ion. Battery was used uh, in about 2003 time frame. I used to work uh, as a consultant for uh, 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 Yarni Technical Products. So they were uh, they uh, the uh, two uh, mission that uh, was originally sent was the Spirit and Opportunity. They were very successful. The uh, uh, the I think the uh, the Opportunity uh, vehicle. Uh, uh, lasted until uh, 2018, almost 15 years. So that showed uh, that uh, lithium ion batteries can be used in space for many, very, very long time. So this is a battery pack. I see, I show this at the bottom of the, uh, of the slide here. All right, so what are the prospects for uh, future higher energy density uh, Batteries. Well, with a lithium ion intercalation electrode uh, with one electron transfer per metal, you know, lithium cobalt oxide was one uh, lithium uh, moving uh, or one electron uh, 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 inserting and ex extracting from it. The maximum you can get is around 300 to 350 watt hours per kilogram. So if you want to make a super high energy density batteries greater than, say, around 350, you have to have a multi-electron transfer per metal. You have to transfer more than one electron per metal in a cathode material for an insertion electrode reaction. Uh, or you have to come, uh, uh, find other kind of uh, uh, reactions, uh, displacement type uh, elect uh, reactions where you uh, transfer multi-electron uh, 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 processes so you have multi electron processes so that's not a multi electron transfer in a intercalation electrode uh, or in a displacement reaction is not as it's not a simple thing 
it's very very often those are not very reversible processes they are uh, very often they are uh, when you transfer more uh, one electron back and forth uh, uh, try to do it reversibly the electron gets stuck on one of the uh, one of the uh, electrodes and uh, it doesn't want to get out of there so it is so it's it's, it's not a it's it's, it's a very very uh, involved uh, research and it, it's it's a it's a lot of work and uh, uh, there, uh, a lot of ingenuity has to go into uh, making uh, uh, super high energy density batteries in the future. There are a lot of people around the world is involved in uh, research on that. So this is a, she shows the theoretical energy density for battery chemical couples. I made uh, this diagram, say lithium as I said is the most uh, electropositive element. So lithium, you always want the lithium to be your anode because that is the most electropositive. And uh, the best you can do, the highest energy density battery that you can make is to take lithium and fluorine. As the, so you have fluorine as the, it's a gas, as the anode, uh, the cathode and lithium as the, uh, uh, as the anode. So if you make that, you can make the, the, the highest energy density battery. But of course, that's not possible because fluorine is a very reactive element and it's also a gas. Uh, well, the next best thing is a lithium oxygen battery. Uh, because and oxygen is, uh, you know, oxygen is a safe material. It's, it's, it's uh, 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 so, uh, uh, we, you know, it's, we, 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 we breathe it every day, so it's uh, every, uh, we are alive because of oxygen. So it gives a 5200 watt hours per kilogram. This is just the energy density for the, just the materials in that. I'm just, I'm not taking all the uh, inert materials in this calculation. This is one way people uh, compare materials. So lithium oxygen is, uh, is, is the highest energy density battery that you can make based on the elements that are known in the periodic table. So this is a battery that I invented in uh, uh, 1996, uh, which has around 5,200 batteries. So this is the ultimate battery. The, the, the lithium ion, for example, theoretical energy density is uh, only in this region here. If you take lithium sulfur, uh, that is a lithium and sulfur as the uh, uh, the cathode is around 24, 2,500. So, so a lot of people are working now on this lithium oxygen and lithium sulfur batteries, but they are not intercalation electrode. They are uh, is a, a simple displacement uh, type uh, uh, reaction uh, 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 or conversion reaction. So. Uh, now I worked one of the things that we did when we I started out working as a young scientist many many years ago was to work on a lithium sulfur battery. People are now uh, have re are reinventing that battery, uh, but we published a paper on that uh, many many years ago in 1979, which was a long time ago, right? <laughs> so uh, and we showed uh, the cycle performance for that battery. However, uh, uh, this is charge and discharge uh, 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 arranged in a stack plot in a, in a, in a graph. However, there are, it had uh, many challenges here. Uh, uh, the, uh, the polysulfide that you form in the battery are insoluble and therefore limited cell capacity. There was uh, some shuttle reactions. Um, I, I don't want to get into uh, explaining all these things because we don't have time. And, uh, and poor lithium cycling efficiency. So this battery didn't really work, at least in our hands in those days. But people are uh, 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 kept on with it. There are uh, still uh, people working, a lot of people around the world are working on it today because this is one of the uh, 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 potential uh, battery systems that, uh, can be, that can provide a significantly higher energy density. So uh, uh, there are a couple of companies that are uh, that have come up with uh, uh, lithium sulfur uh, 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 battery packs for uh, uh, applications. Uh, this is a battery made by uh, Scion Power. This is they use that for military application in drones. 
So some of these drones that are sent, uh, used by the various militaries use a lithium sulfur uh, rechargeable battery. And recently, uh, their company in England, uh, Oxy Power, uh, the Oxy Power, they claim they are, uh, they are, they have developed a rechargeable lithium sulfur battery. But we had given up on it uh, years ago because of the problems. But I guess people kept on working, and uh, they finally claimed they have solved some of the problems. But I still have some doubts about uh, a practical lithium sulfur battery. Now I come to my the last section of uh, my presentation. A short another ten minutes maybe. Lithium uh, air battery. Uh, uh, this is my uh, I invented and I patented it in 1996 and uh, I pub published this paper which has received more than 2,000 citations if you go to Google Scholar you can see that uh, so there are uh, thousands of papers that have been published after my paper uh, so it is uh, the advantages are uh, air is free environmentally friendly you can make both primary and uh, uh, secondary batteries and uh, can make it a uh, uh, the original battery that i made was a polymer electrolyte based battery that's another uh, uh, kind of electrolyte instead of liquid you have polymer i mean that's a uh, we did a lot of work on that i don't want to get into that right at the moment but we uh, when we made that battery we made a, a this is the kind of how it looks like this is a polymer cell packaged in a, a pol uh, 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 polyethylene uh, metallized polyethylene pouches so you have the little opening here the electrodes are inside and when you expose this thing to the air the battery discharges this is my original data that I published uh, so you you can see that the battery dis this is taking the uh, oxygen from the air and it, you can also charge and discharge it and I may I did these calculations based on a uh, there's a story behind it because it was an accidental discovery. So I made some calculations on what was going on and I came up with uh, the idea that it was a lithium oxygen battery system uh, based on thermodynamics. So we did a lot of uh, more recently at uh, Northeastern University. Uh, this is uh, I, in that paper I also published uh, uh, the uh, data for uh, magnesium battery. Uh, 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 which was published separately, and I also, also did calculations for potentially useful other battery systems based on uh, oxygen. So these are for uh, lithium oxygen, aluminum. So these are some of the numbers that I I have in that original paper published in uh, 1996. So we did a lot of work in the last uh, 10 years or so at Northeastern with my students. Uh, we did a lot of uh, mechanistic studies of, uh, we published some very nice papers in the uh, uh, Journal of Physical Chemistry and Electrochemical Society journals. And we found, we did uh, oxygen reduction reactions in uh, oxygen reduction reactions in uh, uh, non-aqueous electrolytes so like uh, ethers and carbonates and all that. And we came out with uh, the uh, uh, with these uh, main, uh, 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 con uh, main conclusions for the mechanism and products uh, that are formed uh, the factors that influence the the, the products and uh, products in a, uh, in an oxygen uh, 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 battery or an air battery Lewis acidity of the cation of conducting salts Lewis basicity of the solvent through solvation ion pairing effect of the anion with lithium and uh, catalysis is also very important uh, so if you you can look at uh, these papers here uh, to, or maybe i can talk to you some other day so this is the overall uh, general uh, uh, the uh, mechanistic scheme for the reduction of oxygen in a, a non aqueous electrolyte you first step is a one electron reduction to form a superoxide that complexes with the lithium so it has some stability and the stability depend upon the solvent that you have and then it is either a, a chemically decomposes to form peroxide or a, a, it is reduced further you can reduce it further uh, if it stays long enough in the electrode uh, 
which cap happens with certain electrolytes. So, and uh, uh, the stable product in all solvents uh, uh, is the uh, peroxide. And we uh, uh, developed this uh, hard soft uh, acid base uh, concept uh, uh, to explain these things. So the lithium, uh, you can always read, uh, finally you form lithium monoxide as the final product. And we developed uh, several electrolytes, sulfones and sulfoxides, and people with uh, uh, glycol, dimethyl ethers, this is our ethers, and then uh, ionic liquids, another class of compounds. So the, we did some uh, a lot of electrochemistry, uh, uh, battery discharge, and uh, uh, looked at the discharge products through uh, an, uh, analytical uh, chemistry using X-ray, uh, uh, energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy, and uh, X-ray diffraction patterns, and, and, and chemical analysis uh, showed that the reaction is this: the lithium. Uh, in, when you discharge your battery, you reduce your oxygen to lithium peroxide and uh, you can charge the battery as well you can charge and discharge it if you use a catalyst so uh, why there is a lot of interest in that because you can significantly reduce the size of the uh, your device even when you go from a conventional this is a primary battery they use in some uh, 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 military applications uh, when you go from uh, the uh, the traditional primary battery to a lithium air, you can almost reduce the size of that battery half. So that's a big advantage. So that is my uh, presentation here. Uh, lithium ion batteries have changed the world, and I have been able to play a small uh, role in this technology revolution. So the science of it involved chemistry, chemical engineering, uh, electrical engineering, mechanics. So it involves a lot of different area of science and engineering. And therefore, you can have a rewarding career in a battery science and engineering. And uh, the energy density of battery, a lithium ion battery today is around 300 watt hours per kilogram or uh, 750 watt hours per liter. And, and we are approaching the limit of one electron per uh, metal capacity in this. So, I uh, you know, uh, and uh, ele electric vehicles uh, have been made possible because of uh, uh, lithium ion batteries. And uh, that will be a major uh, next generation transportation uh, mode for, uh, for people on this earth. So, new cathode materials with uh, multi electrons per metal uh, are uh, needed to develop batteries with a ultra high energy density battery. So that will be the area that people have to work on to develop uh, new batteries. So, and uh, two battery systems that people are working on are uh, lithium sulfur and lithium air batteries. All right, thank you very much.